I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I know you were getting bored. There wasn't enough MTG cards for you to consume, but don't worry. We've got you. Brand new Fallout cards coming right at your face. Emergency video. It starts right now. Let's get into it. I live tweeted this thing. You got to be following us on Twitter, okay? Because you're going to see these tweets as they're coming out. And it is like top tier best tweets in the entire MTG space over here. I got to say it, okay? I'm honest about it. Let's scroll down and we're going to take a look. I tweeted all of the cards that I thought were important from this Fallout announcement today. Check these out. I did one bit where I pretend to run and I'm completely out of breath. First up, we got one of the face commanders, Dog Meat Ever Loyal. A white, a green, and a red for a 3-3 dog. It says, when Dog Meat enters the battlefield, mill five cards, then return an aura or equipment card from your graveyard to your hand. Then, whenever a creature you control that's enchanted or equipped attacks, you create a junk token. And look at these junk tokens in the reminder text there on the left version of Dog Meat. It's an artifact with tap, sack it, exile the top card of your library. You can play that card this turn, meaning you can do lands, activate only as a sorcery. This not having a cost, this just being free, even though it only has to be at sorcery speed, seems very strong to me. I think that this is going to be an enabler in a lot of decks like this, where you want to continue putting pressure on the battlefield. The other relevant part here is this Pip-Boy frame, the Fallout frame, that looks pretty cool in my opinion. I think it translates pretty well. I didn't know how sci-fi, you know, low high tech was gonna look in a card frame, but I think that it pulled it off. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Dogmeat was the first one that we saw and I was really excited about it. Here's what the junk token looks like. Sack it, exile type card to your library. You can play that card this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. Big fan of this mechanic. I think that junk tokens are pretty sweet. That could really get your deck going. Uh, one of my commanders is Uriel. I've played this commander forever. This wasn't in the set, but this is, which is idolized, bringing in the flavor of the video game. So far, the cards I've seen seem to be doing a really good job of that. A white and one for an aura enchant creature. Enchanted creature has exalted, basically. Whenever this creature attacks alone, it gets plus X, plus X until in a turn where X is the number of non-land permanents you control. So a version of Exalted, a much more powerful version of Exalted. But this is a really strong aura. Just suit up one of your creatures. Uriel, if you want to get crazy like me. But just suit up one of your creatures and get to town. Go to attack step. That's what Idolize is going to help you do. I think that's a really strong aura. Got a commander here in Jeskai, a little artifacts commander. But I think I'm burying the lead a little bit there. Look at the text box, y'all. Energy symbols. Uh, energy symbols make me burp. It's been a long time since I've seen an energy symbol on a card, and it just kind of freaks me out overall. I was joking, asking if a tune with Aether is still banned. Maybe that'll keep this deck from getting too powerful. But for real, pay three, tap it, draw a card, pay five to tap, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, you got some strong abilities here. Interesting to see how well this works with the existing energy cards. That's something that needs to be explored. Need to go back and look at Kaladesh, Aether Revolt, see which of those energy cards seems the least reprintable while being the strongest playability in a deck like this. And you might have yourself a breakout star, at least in the short term, on your hands there as far as a card jumping up in price. Another dog, lots of dogs in this reveal today. Rex, Cyberhound, blue, white, one for a 2-2 robot dog. Love that creature type. When it deals combat damage to a player, they mill two cards and you get two energy counters. So this is from the energy deck. You pay two energy to choose target creature card in a graveyard, exile it with a brain counter on it at sorcery speed. And Rex has all activated abilities of all cards in exile with brain counters on them. So that's pretty sweet. Not an ability that you see in blue white very often so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in that color combination speaking mardu language which is my favorite language we've got caesar legion's emperor pretty sweet art here mardu plus one for a four four human soldier whenever you attack you can sacrifice another creature when you do you choose two you can create two one one red and white soldier creature tokens with haste that are tapped and attacking you can draw a card and lose one life 
or Caesar deals damage equal to the number of creature tokens you control to target opponent. So on the attack, you can choose and st stack this correctly here where you're creating more army when you're attacking. Hopefully you've got some kind of anthem that's buffing everything up. So they're coming out of the gate crazy strong. And you can just completely deal damage straight up to an opponent at the same time. Very aggro, Mardu tokens. This one seems really fun to me. This is the one that kind of attracts me the most, but Jake is not really gonna allow me to build yet another Mardu commander. He's gonna force me to build something else. And so I don't think I'm gonna get the chance with this one, but it seems really fun. And that is the kind of card that I definitely wanna play. As far as flavor goes, here's Gary. Whenever it attacks each creature you control named Gary clone gets plus one plus so. I think they were just showing off some flavor with this one. How they've really tried to bring the video game feel into this. I'm going to skip this radiation thing real fast just to look at a commander here. A blue, a green, a black, and one for the wise Mothman. 3-3 three, three flying insect mutant. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, each player gets a rad counter. And whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. So looking at this rad counter mechanic, we got radiation. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, if you have any rad counters, mill that many cards. And then for each non-land card milled this way, you lose a life and a rad counter. So this is sort of a... Uh, over time, this can help you as long as it doesn't build up too much and deal too much damage. Got a little reanimator colors here going with self mill happening as part of this that you can plan for. You're milling the opponents. They're dealing, they're getting damage on them as well. And so I really, the flavor here is just so strong. And I really think that this is going to be an interesting mechanic to explore, especially if one of the pre-cons is just completely dedicated to that. I think that that's going to be really sweet. I'm in my reanimator phase, and so that kind of stuff attracts me. And so I think that that's why I am attracted to it. Look at this. What is this? Anybody tell me what this is? Because I haven't seen it before. No, I'm just kidding. We see it every set now. Serialized is in this. They said they've got seven of these, believe, I believe. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But they've got seven different bobbleheads that you can collect and those also have 500 serialized versions each that can be opened in collector boosters that's right this is one of those products that's going to get commander decks and collector boosters at the same time and those collector boosters are going to have some special treatments one of which we'll look at in a little bit but it's also going to have these serialized bobbleheads this is just it's they've got to slow down with this if they're serialized in every set, nobody's going to care. I guess it will make the ones, the serialized that pop up more expensive if you really want a serialized version. Be kind of cool, I guess, to collect one of each serialized bobblehead. That's a real good collecting achievement. But it just, it's not exciting when it's all the time. If you're not taking your time with it, it's just all the time and it's not exciting. But I'll tell you what's exciting is VATS. This is your targeting system in game. And if you're not familiar with the game, basically it goes into this like time slowed, time stopped moment for you to specific target, specific body parts. They've represented that with the ability split second. And it's just so good. This just happens. You just get to pause time and target it up. And then you choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness and destroy the chosen creatures. I feel like anything beyond two is just so gravy because two mana to destroy a creature pretty good rate if you're hitting one thing with this you're like ah, i'll just do it maybe i'm taking advantage of the split second so nobody can respond to this it just gets to ace that creature but if you can get two with it you're completely on rate and then if you're at three you're gravy town you are in gravy town usa get it because fallout took place most of those games took took place in america um <clears throat> moving on in the collector boosters, we've also got this treatment, the Vault Boy treatment. Or what I... Uh, look, I don't want to crap on this too bad, but this just doesn't look 
cool to me um it looks pretty simple it looks pretty straightforward it doesn't really even look like an official magic card to me maybe it looks like somebody's like deviant art they did a custom fallout deck with what was available i don't know these seem really cool fallout fans seem really excited about them i could be just completely off base in my not liking it at first glance but there's going to be multiple cards specifically in this treatment they also showed off arcane signet um and they also showed off crucible of worlds they hinted that some of these vault boy treatments they are going to be spicier reprints was what blake said this one looks a little bit better to me but still i'm just like i don't know this just for me is i don't know this is a major i don't know i'll tell you though i feel like fallout fans to really customize whichever pre-con they want to go in on hard are going to want these treatments and so cards specifically like the soul ring and like the arcane signet are going to be desired by everyone who wants a full fallout deck fully customized fallout deck has this as the soul ring that's just what it is um we also saw uh basic lands they look really cool some of the cooler looking full art basics i've seen in a long time but <sighs> full art basics man they just they don't they don't they don't tangle the dangle anymore it's just not something that gets you excited because it's in every freaking set it's in every set every secret layer <laughs> they're everywhere i remember when these used to be dope these do look cool though again if you want the full fallout customized deck boom you're looking at this for your basics they've they've taken care of you on that front got another mardu commander mr house president and ceo got a dice rolling mardu commander here whenever you roll a four or higher create a three three if you roll a six or higher create a three three and a treasure and then pay for tap it roll a six-sided die plus an additional six-sided die for each mana from treasures spent to activate this ability so you just are turning this treasure machine into dice rolling machines creating three threes you can do this at instant speed i love this i think this is a really fun one if you like the dice roll mechanic you're gonna be into this if you don't like the dice roll mechanic don't even look at this commander move on this is probably the most powerful card i think i saw today Sp spoiled rad storm a blue and three for storm proliferate at instant speed this seems bonkers lots of decks want this my goodness is this going to be a desired card rad storm two simple words you don't need the reminder text you got two simple words on this card storm and proliferate boom simple beautiful design choice love this i'm a big fan of this card i think it's the most powerful thing i saw spoiled today but I will say that this is also pretty powerful. Menace and Trample. Brutal suite of abilities. But let's keep reading. 6-6 six, six for 6 mana. When it ETBs or becomes monstrous, destroy target permanent. Full stop. No qualification on that whatsoever. Destroy target permanent. Boom. This card is blinkable. This card is resible this card is i love it this is the kind of card that i love this is like big scary ravenous chupacabra except it hits any target permanent not just creatures any permanent this death claw can ace an enchantment this death claw can destroy a land Ooh. Ooh. love that alpha death claw Radstorm may have been the most powerful card I think I saw, but Alpha Deathclaw is my favorite card for sure. And then just for kicks and giggles, over encumbered. This was just a flavor call. I don't think this card is particularly fantastic. When it ETBs, enchanted opponent creates a clue of food and a junk. I remember a junk lets them impulse draw the top card of their library. At the beginning of combat on enchanted opponent's turn, that player may pay one for each artifact they control. And if they don't, creatures can't attack this combat. 
It's fine. Uh, you don't sideboarding commander, so we don't really need it. Out of these, Alpha Deathclaw, Radstorm. I think we got some really cool cards in here. I can't wait to see these entire commander precons. That's it. I got to get out of here. If you need more cards, just wait till tomorrow. There'll be more cards. There'll be more cards tomorrow. There'll probably be more cards tomorrow. Like and subscribe.